Hello everybody and welcome back to the Yellow Squared podcast. It's me, Ned, and my brother James. Hello everyone. And this week we are discussing an embarrassing derby loss to Luton, them lot up the road. And in all fairness to them, they played us off the park. Um, We sat here last Thursday, we sat down um, and went through our preview of the game. And, you know, it was my job to convince you, James, to to back oh. back the boys. Um, and in hindsight, we we got everything wrong. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we yeah. did. <laughs> we we were embarrassed. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but no, what? Yeah, absolutely. Full credit to uh, Luton. They very much deserved the win. And you know they they turned up on the day, yeah. Um, and uh, you know the Luton supporters as well. They did their job. They made it the atmosphere that they would have wanted to have make it made yeah. it, yeah. just like we did in October. Um, and you know they turned up. They played with intensity, a pattern of play, and you know they scored the goals that they needed. We mm. didn't do any of that. Yeah. Well, we'll uh we'll kick things off with um. Just sort of a brief overview of how we felt that Saturday went. Um, we're not going to do any player reviews. We thought it would be pretty pointless. Everyone would get a 2 out of 10. Um, so we've, we've decided yeah. to leave that out for this podcast. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll run through some, some of our opinions and then uh, we'll discuss um, Chris Wilder as well um, towards the end of the podcast. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kick things off. I'll kick things off. Mm. Um, yeah, go for it. I was actually really excited uh, on Saturday morning. Um, I felt that yeah, it was a proper, you know, a proper derby. Um, watching, you know, tuning into Hive Live, I felt a bit, felt a bit nervous, but it was good nerves, you know. Um, mm. It was like a bit of a pre-match buzz. Um, I thought the atmosphere, the atmosphere sounded really good. Um, both sets of fans just so passionate um but it's nice because you know some clubs don't really have a proper rivalry um like like Watford and Luton do so in some ways it's kind of good because these games don't come around very often and it's it's uh it's good that people can get up for a game um I thought the Watford fans through Hive Live sounded lively and loud um Mm. (laughs) to to a certain point when uh, Luton started playing us on the park but um yeah, I think I was really excited. I thought we actually started the game quite brightly. Um, obviously, we we don't have anything going forward in the final third, um, which is really concerning with with the amount of you know the amount of uh, money that goes in, uh, the amount of worth in that attacking sort of front five mm. to not be able to score anything. I mean, to have an xG of zero point zero seven in the derby is is unacceptable. On on any level, I mean, a, a derby, a local derby uh, under twelve to have an xG of zero point zero seven is is embarrassing. So to do that when people have turned up, the fans turned up, people are watching from all over the world. It's it's honestly it's embarrassing for the for the players, and I don't think certain players conducted themselves very well either. Um, I'm I don't really want to single out people, but I think. Um, Lauza and Jao Pedro in particular, I think their body language is all, all wrong. Yeah. Um, a lot of flailing arms. Jao yeah. Pedro picked up one of the most stupid yellow cards I've seen this season. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. And it played right into the Luton fans' hands. They just, <laughs> we made ourselves look silly, and they just mugged us off, essentially. Um. Yeah, I thought we did start brightly and then it faded very quickly as Luton got foothold in the game and obviously the, yeah. the fans got behind them um as you know as we did in in October. But I mean in that pre in the preview we we did speak about how it's so difficult to do a double <laughs> over over uh, any kind yeah. of rivalry because it's impossible like to have a the the hostility of a home crowd. It's it's like walking into a lion's den. Um, so obviously, 
we were just off the pace and clearly put off by the the atmosphere and um certain players were rattled from the start i think Cathcart was rattled um and I, yeah it just we did not turn up other than ken in the first half um we're not doing yeah, player ratings run, didn't he? he did make no. some good runs with the ball but I mean, we're not we're not doing player ratings this week, but he got his six out of ten Ken Semmer performance, and that's probably the highest that anyone would have got this week. Um, so yeah, I think it. <laughs> I think it's sad that we got absolutely battered by Luton um, after talking them up so nicely. We bigged them up. We really bigged them up, and then uh, it's fallen flat we on. Did. <laughs> We've fallen flat on our face. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, we we bigged them up, didn't we? Because the one thing that we thought would be taken for granted and taken, um, you know, taken as red would be that the team would would show up. Yeah. In terms of um, work rate and and hunger and desire, yeah. and and they just didn't. No. Uh, this isn't going to be a. Uh, a deep dive into into the club and and how it's run and um, what we think some of the issues are uh, that will come soon. I'm sure um, we're working on some stuff in the background, aren't yeah. we, mate? But um, yeah, yeah. I th- it was just it was just so apparent that what 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 bore out on Saturday was one team that was so determined to go and get the win and and be aggressive and on the front foot. We spoke about in the preview, how we absolutely had to try and pin Luton's wing-backs yeah. back by being aggressive and attacking and pressing high. Um, we didn't even get anywhere near that. No. Um, Luton came out of the... I agree I agree. we started pretty well, actually, and we were getting forward, but, you know, that quickly faded off, oh, and then we yeah. were just overwhelmed. Yeah, definitely. We were overwhelmed. We looked, we looked overawed by the occasion. Um, I thought we looked so shaky defensively we were, we were we were playing balls that we shouldn't be doing we were we were giving away cheap corners and, and throw-ins um i think we just we just looked totally overawed and panicked by the game yeah. which is a terrifying thing to say for yeah. a team that was you know that we said should be much higher at the league and challenging for you know for silverware yeah and we we just wilted un- under the pressure, <coughs> and I think that that just says where where the team is right now. And Chris Wilder said it, and we'll talk about it in a bit. But it's a team of individuals. Mm. Um, you know, there there isn't a unified team in there. Um, and that f- in, uh, for me, that is not the fault of Chris Wilder and the no. head coach. No, no. Uh, there is there is something deep seated. Um, behind the scenes that, that that means that there there is no team there mm. i think we were crying out for some form of of leader on the pitch uh yesterday i'm sorry not yesterday on saturday um although craig cathcart was the captain and he's the obvious choice yeah um with within the side at the moment um notwithstanding ryan porteous but uh he is he is not a he is not a dictator. He's not he is not someone who is gonna be stepping up, making challenges and, and you know, dragging the team through. Um mm. we don't have that person on the pitch which binds everybody together. Yeah. They they they're just completely lost, completely rudderless. And yeah. you know, yeah, I was <coughs> I was so so um disappointed and, and you know, mm. dejected by, by what we were served up. Um, I thought, I th- I thought you know it was a it was a bad first half and and you know there was an element when we went in down one nil down at half time. I thought okay well we can get to half time keep it at one nil and and then reset and mm. it just you know the second half we started okay but but you know point mm. seven xg is, is is shameful in my opinion when you talk about the players that we had going forward. Yeah. Um, and that, you know that's that's the massive elephant in the room is just we just don't look like scoring goals. We don't look like creating chances. Um, nothing looks like uh, it's going. We're you know we're we're a team of flat track bullies, aren't we? Mm. Um, we can we can go and beat a Birmingham side, which dis- which didn't turn up. 
we can go and beat them 3-0. Um, and, you know, all is well and, and the players are laughing and joking. But, you know, if, if you ask this team to, to dig in and and put put um, a performance together or, you know, try and turn the tide, uh, you know, the way the match momentum is going, there's there's no chance. Mm. And uh, I think I think the team is dead. It's completely rotten. Yeah. And I don't think there's any I don't think there's any way back um, f- for this a group of players. No. And that's not necessarily their fault. No. Um, but I'll. I'll leave that there because I'm straying into uh, I'm straying into <laughs> yeah. another podcast. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, you know, if you want me to sum up the Luton game, in my opinion, um, as as short as I can, I'll just say, you know, it was just a shamefully abject, lackluster, woeful, yeah, cowardly, cowardly performance. Yeah. I, I think don't think I'm on the fence there. No, 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 not at all. I just <laughs> I think that um, the big players went missing when we needed them. Um, where where was where yeah. was Lauser to dictate the play going forward? Where he's obviously the pivot in midfield. Why I, I didn't see him turn on turn on the ball and move it forward once in a game. Um, nah. he went missing. He spent he spent all of his time shouting at everyone else for not doing what he wanted. But yeah, yeah, I thought I thought he was really disappointing. Yeah. Um. We we spoke about um in in the preview we spoke about how. Technically, this that that Watford side is much better than the Luton side, and I still stand yeah. by that point. I just think there I is no well, yeah. there there is no loyalty in the squad. No one is willing to work for each other. So when it comes down to a a dog fight where the team is rubbish that we're playing against, and this has happened multiple other times in the season, um, thinking about yeah. Rotherham at home, Wigan at home, where the team is so much worse technically, no one wants to work for each other. So you end up just Putting in the, the most abject performance yeah. with eleven individuals, and we yeah. just go through the motions, and you know, it, it, there's an expectation that that you know the player that you pass the ball on to is going to go and do something with it. Yeah, and um, it can't be like that. Yeah, no, 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 it's no. Um, there was there was nothing in that performance on Saturday. No, which which suggests that we'll get anywhere near to picking up. I don't know, two or three wins and then run into the end of the season. Yeah. Well, um it's just it's been a it's been a dire season in, in total. <sighs> I mean, we we started off with a project and have ended up with three managers and just dross um coming into the final seven games of the season. Um for the first time we we featured on the the Hub Football UK's Page in the the most out of form teams in the championship. Um, That's not surprising, is, is it? Which sort of sums up how how the past few games has gone. Um, I mean, I I think the I think the the squad is absolutely rotten to the core. I think I I have no idea what has gone on uh, over the past few years, but I don't think any manager could fix that. Um, yeah, like like you said, this is not this is not a podcast for that. Um, so <laughs> no, we'll move on. Come in. We'll move on. Soon. We'll move on swiftly from uh, from that performance. Um, in a in a few words, uh, it was dire. The big players went missing. Um, it was quite a cowardly performance, and we were embarrassed on many levels um, from start to mm. finish. I mean, turned up in Harry Potter buses. Um, it's like the club <laughs> wants to ban to us. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But we'll uh, we'll move on to uh, to discussing some of the post match comments from Chris Wilder, and I think he has gone up in the estimation of so many Watford fans after this, um, because it's obvious that he's not just a you know a retiring football manager that is looking for a payout of. I don't know, maybe yeah, seven point eight million. Not. <laughs> um, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, he's uh, going to get close to that figure. So yeah. yeah, but it it shows that he he actually cares um, about about absolutely. the running of the club, and so I've I've got some quotes written down from uh, from his post match interview. So I'll, I'll just run I'll run through these quickly. So he says, um, "There's a lot of so called good players here." But they have to show so much more if they want to be top players. 
I hope they reflect on their performance because it wasn't good enough to get any sort of result in a local derby. And it's interesting, that comment, because he spoke before the game um, saying yeah. about if you look back through his CV, you know, he's been in so many derbies. Um, yeah. He's managed and played in derbies. So he knows the occasion and he will have known how. I mean, he managed Sheffield United for about six years. He would have played, yeah. he would have managed at least five he, St Steel City derbies. And yeah, he knows and how to motivate, well. you know, he, he knows how to motivate a group of players. So I think yeah. there he's quite obviously calling out the likes of Lauza and João Pedro and Keenan Davis, the people that obviously lost their head and went missing after the first 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Which I think is brave for a, a Watford manager in particular to, to call out players publicly. And, I mean, it shows that he obviously has no, you know, attachment to to the per the I people that would fire him. Um, I think it shows how angry he was. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, uh, yeah. Not to not to jump in on, on no, what you're no, saying too much, but this this is the Chris Wilder I expected, and I think this is the Chris Wilder that um, the uh, the club were hiring. Yeah, you know. You know, to, you know, somebody with a bit of drive and determination. Mm, yeah. Um, I I think he would have been absolutely furious. Uh, you know, with with, with what he saw, I yeah. think he's got every yeah. right to to say what he said. Mm. Um, I think he, I think he probably, uh, he's got nothing to lose. No, no. Uh, because, you know, he's only on a contract to the end of the season. I know um, as as we're recording the uh, WD18 video, um, the phone call with Chris Wilder's just dropped. I'm I'm really looking forward to giving that a proper listen to. But I know he basically says that he'd be interested in staying on yeah. um, for next season. Uh, whether or not calling out the uh, <laughs> calling out the playing staff mm. and uh, and and maybe the, you know the structure of the club is 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 the wise thing to do. But he's got nothing to lose. But I'm so pleased that he's actually gone out and said and said what he said. Yeah. Um, because it needs to be put out there. It needs to be highlighted yeah. and articulated. Yeah. Um, but if 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 these players that are you know pursuing bigger moves and, and you know a career in football, if they want if they want that, they need these moments where they where they are taught, told they're not good enough mm. and they they're not they're not delivering. I don't I don't believe for a second that um, those team of eleven players. I don't believe for a second that all eleven of them necessarily 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 care about the about the club. No. There's a few of them in there no, that, no. that I'm certain do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start naming names, but I know I know some of the players in that squad do deeply care, and I think I, I suspect some others just just don't. Um, and that's a fault of the culture and and, and how yeah. the club is being run at the time. But uh, you know I'm I'm. I was really pleased that Chris Wilder came out and said what what he said. He yeah. hit the nail on the head in a, yeah. in a number of respects. Um, my anger with the situation is that it's Chris Wilder that is the person that is speaking up yeah. after the game. Yeah. You know, he 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 can have his big old um, blow up post match press conference. By all means, he's the manager, and, and that's that's fine. But you know, a day, two days after the game, he's you know he's engaging with you know social media channels. Um, he's putting emails out to the fans. You know, that that's absolutely not not the right person. That's got to be coming from much higher up. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, who who knows who? We know it wouldn't ever be Gino, but you know Scott Duxbury, Ben Manga. Mm. Those are the people that I'd want to be speaking up after. After, um, after the weekend, and yes, we can turn around and say we're, it's a bit emotive because it was a derby loss. But I think, I think a loss like Saturday in a derby just underlines all of the problems and everything that's been said so far yeah. this season and the previous three or four seasons where we we turn around and say that there's no team here. No, there's a good there's a, there's a load of good individuals and a load of good players. Um, some with you know, you know glittering 
futures ahead of them, but they don't gel mm. together mm. when when they play for Watford. Yeah. Um, slight off tangent, but you know, brilliant, brilliant for Chris Wilder. I'm yeah. delighted for what he said, and I fully support him. And I would love him to be on next season. Yeah. Um, in certain circumstances. Yeah, I mean, I think if the club properly backs him, then he is ideally the right man for the job. He knows what he wants. He'll be blunt and honest, and he he understands the fans so much better than other managers that we've had in the past. Um, I mean, to be reaching out so uh, so early into into like a managerial career. I know um, uh, Cisco obviously loves Watford and uh, speaks to a lot of Watford fans a lot of the time. But mm-hmm. to have somebody come out, you know, after a after a derby loss. And and speak his mind, and basically just say like, you know, we know it was rubbish. It wasn't good enough. I feel terrible for the fans. But like you said, you know, it's not. It shouldn't be him that says that. Obviously, like you said, yeah, he'll have his no. post match interview. But the main statement should not be then again, like three or four days later. It should be from somebody higher up. Saying, you know what. We know we're we're not getting this right at the moment, but we're working to rectify it. We're working with the right people to fix the club. But that's n- that's never going to happen. Um, which is what like it would be so interesting to to see what um, what Gino Posso has to say in the summer, because I wa- I really wonder what what he can say, which can you know, can turn around an entire fan base. Um, yeah, actions speak louder than words now. Yeah, I, I think we've gone past, you know, a statement <coughs> at the end of the season saying, look, we're, s- we're, we're sorry. I think some something needs to change. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we thought it was coming when um, there was rumours that Giretta had been fired, but, you know, <sighs> he's still there yeah. now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult one, but you know, I'd, I'd really like to see a team built around Chris Wilder. We'll get a lot of money for Zhao and s- a decent sum for Saar because he's got a lot of pedigree on him. So obviously he's, he's very inconsistent, yeah, yeah. but he's still he's got what, nine two, goals a season and a, a handful yeah. of assists and he's made the quarter final of a world cup. I think yep. he's got some good pedigree behind him to get a decent sum of money. So I reckon that you know we let the big players go that maybe could be behind the scenes, you know, disrupting the 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 dressing room because of you know ego, whatever. We I mean we saw it last season after certain players left. Many, many of the more experienced players like um, Dan Gosling came out and said that the atmosphere in the dressing room is much better. Um, so maybe a repeat of that could could be the difference um, with certain players moving on. But, you know, give him, yeah. give him a window with working with Ben Manga and Costa and just back him. I don't understand why we try and b- go for a project and don't back managers it it really it it baffles me that rob ed was is known for playing a 352 and we didn't get him a right wing back which it uh, it just it it boggles the mind but i hope we stick with chris wilder i mean <laughs> the likelihood of him sticking around after his comments are quite low but it would be a fan favorite decision to stick with him and it could be the start of turning the ship around the only yeah, I, it, yeah. The only the, I suppose maybe what I would say is less a fan favorite decision. I think I think it would be a fan approved decision because yeah. it would yeah. it would it would show a little bit of willingness to give somebody some time and and give a bit of consistency. Yeah, uh, all your points are totally valid, mate. Yeah, but um, I think I think the the problem is actually much bigger than you know back a manager yeah. sign the players yeah, yeah. he wants because because you know I, i've got this feeling that behind the scenes there is there are real problems mm. um 
with you know how players are treated you know yeah. how the playing staff are actually looked after um th those those sorts of things and you we could out and we will do we'll have a a much deeper look at it but uh, i think those are some of the major problems which i don't think are even solved by um you know signing a signing a manager signing the players that he wants i don't yeah. think it's i don't think it's necessarily solved yeah yeah by yeah. that um, I think there's a lot of other stuff that has to happen. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't agree yeah. more. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Strayed a bit away from the Luton game there, didn't we, really? <laughs> yeah, but you, you're always <laughs> going to. You're always going to. Um, just trying yeah. to put that in the yeah. rear view as quickly as possible. So, yeah, the, yeah. we've got a couple of games coming up. Huddersfield at home, Coventry yeah. away. Coventry just got absolutely battered by Stoke. Um, I will be going to that, so it, yeah, I'll be nice. able to see it in the flesh. Um, I am looking forward to it, despite despite the last result. Um, so I'll I'll be very excited, um, and we'll get we'll get another couple yeah. of pods out to you guys, you know, really really soon. But um, I think we're we're both in agreement here when we say that we're really enjoying in, uh, enjoying making content at, at the moment. Um, yeah. Despite what's going on on and off the pitch, um, I think we're no. both having a blast making making the pod. Um, just reaching out, speaking to some of you guys on Twitter. Yeah, I think I think we're really appreciative of uh, of all the love and support that we've been getting recently. Um, I yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. On, uh, if I can just end on two 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 points of, of yeah, of course. attempted positivity. <laughs> uh, two and a half, maybe. Um, yeah, two big games. We we can only go up after that Luton performance. <laughs> only go up. Uh, we can only go up because I think that was sort of the uh, lowest of the low. The lowest. 0.0 of the the low. next year. Two massive games over the Easter holiday. Huddersfield Town, yes, they're in a better form, much lower left in the league. And then and then Coventry as well. The hilarious aspect of this is is as unlikely as it is, but you know, if we go back to back on, on the Easter weekend, all of a sudden the door is still ajar for us. It's not over. Um, we, you know, um, we we can only go and do our job. I'm hoping that it's a rallying cry from from Chris Wilder mm. and the team get on board and they take a long hard look at themselves. So, I've not I've not totally given up uh, hope. That is my heart talking, not my head. Yeah. Um, so you know, we you know get behind the get behind the the boys. Get behind Chris Wilder, most importantly, mm. um, you know, and and hopefully we can get some good results over the Easter weekend. And uh, also, um, full shout out to the uh, the Watford women. Another unbelievable result. I think it was Plymouth Argyle five two. Yeah. Um, they are looking odds on for for promotion and are by far and away the uh, the beacon of light from the um, from inside the club yeah. at the moment. So well done to them. Yeah. They're absolutely killing it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, some some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. There's lots of great work that's been done within the club, um, yeah. sort of outward facing and, and the other teams. So I'll just leave that there. It's yeah. all doom and gloom for the for the for the men's senior team, yeah. but for for other aspects of the club, um, there's some there's some good stuff going on out there. Yeah, and yeah, I thanks for all the support, everyone. We're having a great time. You might not sound like it, but we are. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll end off we'll end off this podcast. Um, Thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, you'll see this on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's everywhere. So make sure to, to tune in and um, subscribe while you're there. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye.